If these last few months have taught us anything, it's that hopping on a jet and flying across the world for a vacation is an amazing privilege that we have definitely been taking lightly. But the lack of flights in the past year hasn't reversed climate change or even put the slightest dent on it. Right now, everyone is slowly peeking their heads out of the door. International travel, at least partially, is back on. But there remains the small but very real issue of an impending climate emergency. So how do we plan to deal with that? Hybrid air vehicles, or HAV, might have the answer. HAV is a British firm currently worth $32 million, and their airlander ship is 92 meters long, cruises at 92 miles per hour, and can go for five full days in the sky. Its maximum altitude is 20. After 84 years, HAV has come out with a concept for eco-friendly airships that claim to reduce emissions by a whopping 90% compared to traditional flights. You know, that's a pretty big promise. The 100-seater hybrid electric Airlander 10 prototype went into development over 10 years ago. Finally, after years of fine-tuning, they are ready to go into production soon. They even announced a bunch of flight routes they hope to have up and running the same year. The Airlander 10 took its first flight in August of 2012. It was initially made for the U.S. Army under the name HAV-304, and it was intended for the surveillance of Afghanistan. But for some reason or another, the Army decided to terminate the project. But I guess HAV had come too far to just let the project die. The company repurposed the airship for civilian use, and good thing too. Taking similar time to an airplane flight, each journey on the airlander produces a fraction of the carbon emissions of an airplane flight. Where a five-hour flight on a Boeing or Airbus would have emissions of 149 pounds per passenger, the airlander would only give about 10 pounds of emissions. HAV's chief executive, Tom Grundy, compares the airlander to a fast ferry. It isn't meant to be a luxury product, but a practical solution to challenges posed by the climate crisis. 47% of regional flights connect cities less than 230 miles apart, but they emit a considerable amount of carbon dioxide while doing so. The new generation of airships would get around by riding the jet stream, a powerful air current that circles the planet. The airship would extend a mile and a half long and circle the globe in 16 days, hauling more than 20,000 tons of cargo while spending little energy. The jet stream moves from west to east, so airships could only go in that direction. So if they took off from the United States, they would have to cross the Atlantic Ocean and Europe to reach Asia. The craft would then continue west across the Pacific to return home. And it certainly wouldn't be as cramped as traditional jets. Even two hours in the middle aisle of economy class is a nightmare, but the interiors of the Airlander 10 look quite pleasant. Initial renderings for the aircraft's interior feature plush sheets and floor-to-ceiling windows offering plenty of space, natural light, and incredible views of the world below. Just what we've been asking for of traditional flights all this time. And the Swedish company Ocean Sky Cruises have wasted no time scheduling travel packages starting 2023. They've started marketing trips to the North Pole in this luxury cocoon. In addition to more space, Passengers will also experience a comfortable flight thanks to a low noise engine, low vibration, and low turbulence cabin, and the option of even opening a window. If they're so great, why did we discontinue them? Well, many years ago, before the era of Boeings and Airbuses, massive international airports, and pesky pre-boarding requirements and inspections, airships were actually going to be the future. Thanks to their cost effectiveness and longer range, airships were seen as an attractive and efficient form of air travel in the early 20th century. They even played a key role in the military, being used for bombings in World War I. By the 1930s, luxury airships became a thing, and they were whisking well-to-do passengers across the Atlantic Ocean. They were considered a technological marvel. They even had an influence on the New York City skyline. It's rumored that the spire of the Empire State Building was designed to be converted into an airship dock. Well, needless to say, that didn't work out very well. As brilliant as this form of transport was, it all came crashing down in 1937. Called the Hindenburg disaster, the hydrogen-filled craft exploded in a massive fireball, and the cause of the fire is still unknown today. Was it the biggest airship disaster to date? Nope. That honor goes to the British manufacturer's airship R101, which crashed in France in 1930. The fire incinerated 46 passengers and crew, 
and two members died from the injuries they sustained soon after. At the time, it was the largest airship ever built. Though the Hindenburg disaster wasn't as big, it was certainly dramatic. After that, airship travel became an instant pariah, and the era of passenger airships disappeared overnight. Since then, the use of blimps have been severely limited, especially since airplanes and helicopters dominate the skies. Though blimps played a useful surveillance role in World War II, airships today are mainly used for overhead photography at sports events and as massive flying billboards. Today, the Van Wagner Group, an airship association, estimates that there are just 25 airships currently operating around the world, and there are even fewer Zeppelins. So, hydrogen-filled ships are probably not the best idea. Good thing the newer airships use helium instead. We were using hydrogen in the first place because it's the Earth's lightest element and can be obtained quite easily and inexpensively. Its flammability, however, does pose a problem. In addition to the Hindenburg disaster, dozens of hydrogen airships were destroyed by fire. No American airship has been inflated with hydrogen ever since. But helium's non-flammable nature makes the only practical lifting gas for human-crewed lighter-than-air flight. The problem is, it is pretty scarce and expensive, and the use of helium can reduce a rigid airship's payload by more than half. Seeing the potential in the airship industry, Lockheed Martin obviously wants some skin in the game. Skunk Works, an arm of the aerospace giant that created the UH-60 Black Hawk and Defiant X, is developing a demonstrator airship for commercial use to help aid in disaster zones or acquire minerals from remote mining sites. They also have a robot that crawls along the exterior of the blimp to seek and repair tiny holes. Flying Whales is another company developing an airship for freights. It picks up and drops off the payload without ever actually landing. It will use helium to just hover over the ground and it will have winches to lift and lower the cargo, saving energy. Once complete, the vehicle should be able to carry 66 tons. Not to be left behind, an Israeli startup, Atlas LTA, is hoping to join the market with three different designs. The ships have cargo bays built into the airship, and unlike current plans, they would be powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Wait, isn't that unsafe? Well, thanks to a new study, there is an alternative that improves the safety of airships that want to run on hydrogen. A paper published as the cover feature in Advanced Synthesis and Catalysis demonstrates a way to do hydrogenation without compressing hydrogen gas. So rather than using cylinders or compressed oxygen, the new method creates its own source of hydrogen gas using a chemical reaction, and the resulting hydrogen is immediately used for hydrogenation. The two compounds that react to make the hydrogen are stable, have a shelf life of about five years, and aren't incredibly expensive either. Plus, Ross Aerosystems, a Russian-based company, has developed a chemical additive that renders hydrogen less flammable, and Buoyant Aircraft is developing gas bags to safely store the gas. The vehicles would also use carbon fiber, a lightweight but safe and durable material that would make airships less fragile. Also, back when the Hindenburg flew, Operators had only the most basic means of predicting weather patterns, but we have computerized weather forecasting systems now, which would help them steer clear of storms and help optimize the use of air currents. And to minimize the risks associated with hydrogen, the developers plan to get rid of the crew. Instead, airships would operate autonomously and would be loaded and unloaded by robots. If the airship is only carrying cargo or equipment, no humans would be injured or harmed. Additionally, hydrogen fuel cells would generate a precious byproduct, water. This could be released as the hydrogen flies over drought-stricken areas. Understandably, despite the benefits, the airship has its critics. Firstly, building such an enormous aircraft would be a challenge. There are design challenges associated with making something this massive, not to mention raising capital for a project that revives a vehicle that caused a famous disaster. Right now, blimps are enjoying their comeback phase as companies develop helium airships for surveillance, luxury travel, and shipping. Airships are particularly useful for carrying ore or lumber from mines or logging sites that planes and trucks can't reach. In as little as over five years, we might have a sky filled with blimps, just like in a Philip Pullman fantasy novel. And if all goes well, halves aim to make their airship 100% emission free might just become a reality. What are your thoughts on a world that relies entirely on airships? 
Would you travel in one? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and check out more on the Tech Monster channel. Thanks for watching.